Many of the Western sanctions imposed on Russia since the invasion of Ukraine are aimed at restricting Russia's access to hard international currency. But as the country is the world's biggest exporter of oil and gas, this has proven to be a challenge. Now, Russia's energy revenues are estimated at about $700 million per day for crude oil and refined products and at about $400 million per day for natural gas sent via pipelines to the European Union. The proceeds of oil and gas exports account for nearly half of Russia's federal budget. The EU has stopped short of a full oil and gas embargo. Instead, it plans to cut by nearly two-thirds its gas imports from Russia by the end of this year. And the goal is to make Europe independent from all Russian fossil fuels well before 2030. So far, though, Germany and other EU, EU countries still depend heavily on Russian energy. Here's what that means. Natural gas from Russia. Ever since the country started a war in Ukraine, a crucial resource has become a highly politicized issue. Amid Germany's dependence on Russian gas, the initial order was clear, use as little as possible. We're in a situation where I have to make very clear that every hour, every kilowatt hour of energy that we can save helps. Suggestions included no private sauna use and turning down the heat. But domestic heating accounts for less than a third of Germany's natural gas consumption, while industry accounts for just over a third. The rest is used to produce electricity or by trade and commerce and others. Amongst the biggest users of gas is the chemical industry. In the southern German town of Ludwigshafen, market leader BASF sprawls across an area of 10 square kilometers. 37 terawatt hours of natural gas are used here annually, a full 3% of Germany's overall consumption. Almost half of that is used as a raw material. To make ammonia, for example, used in nitrogen fertilizers. Germany's farmers' organization is concerned that natural gas shortages now could lead to supplies of wheat, rapeseed and important vegetables running low in 2023. Experts say the current rise in food prices could be followed by empty shelves next year. Another product based on natural gas, acetylene, used in plastic wrappers and glue, in perfume and shampoo. BASF says that it would be impossible to quickly replace natural gas as a raw material for these products. The chemical industry accounts for 3% of Germany's GDP. No wonder experts worry about the impact of a gas shortage for the sector. All right, let's get the view of Guntram Wolf on this. He is the president of the Bruegel think tank. Welcome to DW. Now, as we've heard, uh, Russian energy is very important to, to, to uh, the German economy and German energy firm Uniper says it is ready to meet Russia's demand and pay for gas in rubles, as seems to be the case for Italy's any. What would that mean? Well, I think it's very clear that Russia tries to uh, play around with uh, European countries uh, and the ruble uh, invoicing trick is basically a political game to divide um, and, and rule Europe. So I think it is very important in the current situation that we do not accept uh, being held hostage and that Europe, the European Union, has a unified position vis-a-vis -vis Russia and actually uh, imposes uh, smart sanctions on Russia so that Russia uh, cannot make quite as much profits as it can currently. Mm. In the most extreme scenario, we would cut off um, Russian imports um, completely. However, the resistance to that is very big and we've seen some sectors really being very vocal I think um, uh, um, a better scenario and politically more feasible scenario will be one where uh, we would actually tax, so put, impose a tariff on Russian imports, uh, imports from Russia, uh, so as to reduce the extraordinarily high profits that Putin is currently making. I want to talk about that in a second, but when European companies are adhering to the Kremlin's demand of making payments for gas deliveries in rubles. Doesn't this united European front showing cracks? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is showing cracks and uh, it is totally unacceptable uh, if companies uh, deviate from, from what governments and what the European Union as a whole has decided currently. And so there needs to be a clear line from our political leaders uh, limiting uh, that kind of a behavior uh, because it is completely unacceptable in a situation of war. Uh, no political system can accept that, sim uh, that some companies play the, play the game of, of of the dictator on the other side. Mm. Now, you propose uh, uh, taxing um, Russian gas deliveries <laughs> to Europe. Um, what would the advantage be there vis-a-vis -vis the current way things are going? <laughs> Well, I mean, the main problem currently is that um, we are talking about embargoes. We are gradually phasing out, and in the meantime, the price has has risen quite quite significantly, and we continue to import. So the revenues that that Putin and Russia are actually making are very very high, and so so uh, we need to really think about how we can bring down those revenues um, because they do fund forty percent, more than forty percent. Um, of the Russian federal budget and therefore fund the war. So what we need to do is, uh, I mean, the, the most extreme scenario is a full embargo. And there, I think politically, it's more controversial. But I would also argue that the chemical industry in Germany is really overcharging its case. Um, if even in the case of a full embargo, there would still be gas for BASF um, in, in Germany. Uh, it would come from, from mobile terminals, LNG terminals. But I think I think the really better solution that will be easier to pass is a tariff. So a tariff, uh, a unified European tariff imposed on uh, all imports coming coming from Russia, um, and that would basically tax away the extraordinary right. profits that Russia is making. Gantram Wolf, president of the think tank Bruegel, thank you for your thoughts.